Well, today's topic is one that even me who needs to know, and that's how to recover quickly from a, a cheat day or a cheat meal. And none of us are perfect. Our health journeys are linear either. I remember a couple months ago, one of my clients said, Sarah, why are you taking all these supplements still? You're per, you know, you you have no chronic diseases anymore. You're you've cured yourself. Our health is not a linear A to B and then we're done. I mean, it is, how can we be better always, right? There's always something you, that you can do, but the goal isn't perfection. And actually it's to learn from the days that you actually fall off the wagon. And when someone says, Sarah, I'm really embarrassed. I've fallen off of your supplements. I need to get back on track. What do I do? And I'm like, I'm so happy that you've fallen off because now you're feeling what it feels like to not be on track and it gives you motivation to get back. And what's so great about the supplements that we've talked about is they, they get you back on track so much quicker and make you feel like, okay, I can do this. But having that cheat meal or a cheat day will remind you of the why of why you stay on track most of the time. And the goal is to learn from the cheat and get right back. And maybe you learn that, hey, I can actually have a cheat day. And maybe if I stick to just whole foods and not processed foods during my cheat, it really may benefit me. Maybe I'm so low carb and so fixed on the ketogenic diet that when I have that sweet potato, my muscles love it. And I actually feel more energy from it. And everyone's different. Men and women are different. Women during their cycles are different. Something might be able to work well um, in the beginning of a cycle versus the end or mid, mid cycle. So a lot of those things are little clues that when you do have a cheat day, you might actually get some positive feedback. But you don't want to live a life where you have to say no to um, the apple pie served at a party. I mean, I, I was at a graduation party yesterday. Do I want to be able to partake in the food if I want to? Yeah. Am I okay if I'm not hungry to not eat and have a mocktail in my hand? Absolutely. But if you're wanting to cheat and have that cheat meal, how do you do it and how do you feel okay about it and not have that guilt and shame? And we have been taught that food is a reward. That is not the mindset. Food is to be fuel for that, for living life, for brain energy and physical energy. And we need to get away from that shame and guilt around not eating right. And um, okay, I've done so good during the day, I'm going to have four glasses of wine at night, or three bowls of sugar cereal. And you guys know who I'm talking to. And you don't want to respond to that cheat day <laughs> with just cutting calories and exercising more because that's what everyone tells you to do. Not only does that, by cutting calories and exercising more, reinforce the guilt around the cheat, but it backfires by slowing down your metabolism, creating a negative mind and body connection, and actually increases the hunger so that you want to cheat more. So let's see what are the side effects of actually having that cheat meal or a cheat day. And most people, whether they had alcohol or not, feel like the next morning that they are hungover. Like it's like, oh my God, I just got hit by a truck. And why is that? Number one, water retention. The excess carbs and the wrong kind of sodium. Now, remember, we're not talking about accelerated ancient salt type sodium where it's full of over 62 minerals, but the, the stripped down sodium of table salt or restaurant salt or the sodium that is in processed foods, that's going to cause your kidneys to retain water. And excess carbs make your kidneys retain water. That's why when people start a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet, that first couple of days, oh my gosh, I've lost five pounds in two days. That's not fat weight. That is water weight because your kidneys just let go of the water, which is great. And so when you eliminate the carbs, the kidneys just kind of go, whew, I don't need it. But it also lets go of the minerals. So we need to remember that. Typically, the body will retain an additional two to 10 pounds of water just from one day of eating processed foods, inflammatory vegetable oils, sugar, and carbs. 
Next, you've got the bloat. The stomach and the intestines may have excess inflammation due to the indigestion as the stomach may fail to break down the processed foods. And just from one cheat day, one, the microbiome and the gut bacteria can become unbalanced and you can have leaky gut. Leaky gut, people think, oh, it's just from days and days and a, a full complete diet of the wrong foods. It can be caused by one day or one meal of the wrong foods. So that is something to remember. That bad bacteria outnumbers the good bacteria. For me, if I eat, I'm talking even chicken, right? That a low carb ketogenic food chicken. And I talk about this in my gut pathogen um, blog that that can trip up the E. coli and salmonella in me, my gut and disrupt the, the, the good, healthy microbiome. And so you want to be able to get that back. That causes me huge bloat. I can have a flat stomach and I can look like I am seven months pregnant, depending on the health of my gut bacteria. Next, most people get some sort of constipation from having a cheat day. And that's because of the backed up um, liver, its inability to break down the toxins, the inflammatory vegetable oils, processed foods, excess sugar, the motility of the intestine slows down leading to that constipation. And this causes the symptoms to become even worse because the toxins are staying in the body longer. So you're not getting them out with, the, with that constipation and the body will start reabsorbing it, making it twice as bad. Next would be the headaches. And I know you guys know of this where it's like, oh my God, I feel like I'm hung over. Well, that's due to the instability of the blood sugar and insulin following that taking in of more sugar and carbs than usual. And additionally, the lack of proper electrolytes that comes in more nutrient dense foods will make that those headaches worse. So instead of eating those nutrient dense foods with the minerals and the electrolytes and the accelerated ancient salt that you're wor you, that you're used to, you're getting the stripped down sodium and the lack of nutrients and then the leaky gut um, combination that leads to the headaches and the lack of water balance in the body, you're bloated and retaining water, but your brain is not getting the true cellular hydration, that's gonna cause the headaches. And next is my favorite word, it's that hangry, that feeling of, of hunger and anger together. And that, that hangry feeling is because that anger is stored in the liver. So when you are, being more difficult on your liver, you're gonna get a little more agitated and anger and the liver becomes overburdened and hot from a cheat day because it's having to work much harder than it, it's built to do so. And the excess hunger is, is coming from the instability of the blood sugar and you're, you're after eating a lot of sugar the day before, maybe alcohol and carbs, the blood sugar is going up and down. And that's triggering the, the hormone ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone, hormone saying, feed me, feed me. And it is, it's kind of disrupting that leptin hormone. The leptin hormone is the one that says, okay, I'm good. I'm full. I don't need to eat anymore. And it's all out of whack. So here you are, you ate way more than normal the day before. You think that you're going to wake up and not eat all day. You're so stuffed. You feel gross. But that next morning, you're actually more hungry because your stomach is distended. It's stretched out. And then the, the balance of the sugar has made the ghrelin go up and down and the blood sugar go up and down. And when it's down, your body's trying to compensate by bringing the blood sugar to a stable level and making you eat. It's trying to find that, that homeostasis. And lastly, you're going to be tired. When you transition from low carb eating where you're producing ketones for energy and maintaining a high level of ATP, which is the true cellular energy, into eating a day of high sugar and carb foods, the body's gonna significantly lower its ATP production. And while the liver's backed up and working overtime to pr process those toxins, 
it's going to cause the thyroid hormones to become suboptimal, leading to fatigue. And just that overburden of toxins in the body makes the blood feel sluggish and, and move slower. So here we are day after Thanksgiving, day after the Super Bowl, whatever it is, or maybe just a day where the stress got to you and you just dove into the pantry, into the ice cream and ordered yourself a pizza. So what do we do that next day? Number one, don't be feel guilty. It happens to the best of us. And it's like I mentioned in the beginning, it reminds you of why we stay on track. But if you did not have the tools that I'm going to mention, it could take a week to get rid of the bloat, to get rid of the water retention. I always say, if you don't have these tools, just for the scale alone and the water retention, it'll take about five to seven days to get back to normal, let alone all the other side effects. So it also depends on your level of health your insulin resistance in your age. You know, our kids can get back on track, no problem. Um, us that are a little older, it's going to be a little more difficult. So what can you use? So number one, if you know that you're actually going to dive into that cheat meal and you're in the act, take the berberine HCL. This is an amazing supplement. Berberine is known to be the equivalent to the metformin, which is helping stabilize insulin and blood sugar. So you can take two capsules with your cheat meal. This is going to help support the pathogenic and bacterial balance in the body, but also slow the rise of the sugar and the insulin. And it's also the HCL is going to help with the digestion. The HCL breaks down the, the food and increases the proper amount of acid in your um, stomach to break down the food for easier digestion. So you're not feeling so overwhelmed and full when you're done eating your cheat meal. So that's part of the issue with cheat meals is that blood sugar rise goes super high and then falls really fast. And the berberine is going to kind of help you um, maintain a more a slow rise. Next, that night, on the night of your cheat meal, take a tablespoon of detox powder and water. And I tell this to college kids who are drinking too much. And even if you are having a little too much to drink, this powder's magic. It's the only organic formula of six ingredients that coats the stomach in the intestinal lining, reduces inflammation, helps with the bloat and regularity, alleviates those issues like Crohn's disease and colitis, but it also helps soak up the day, all of the toxins from the day and that cause leaky gut. And as the inflammation is decreased, the absorption of the nutrients is improved and it will also help you sleep because sleep is a huge issue after a day of cheat meal and it will help with the bowel movements. It will help soak up the toxins that wake you up in the middle of the night. Um, a lot of people find themselves, maybe they're able to fall asleep, but then they can't stay asleep and they wake up between three and five. And if you're waking up between three and five in the morning, it's your liver. That liver has this big dump and that's also a sign you may need a liver cleanse. And I recommend one every couple of months, especially with um, the toxic environment that we are in now. Number three, the Acceleridine. You're going to wake up that next morning. You're going to take your Acceleridine. Now, if you have not started a regimen of the Acceleridine, you start with three drops in water on an empty stomach three times a day but you're going to increase it by one drop per dose per day until you reach 25 drops three times a day. So that means day two, you're gonna be at four drops three times a day. But why is Acceleridine important for um, after a cheat day? It's going to quickly increase that ATP, that's and cellular energy by 18 times the amount that you would have um, versus not taking the Acceleridine. It's not like any other iodine. It increases the metabolism, the caloric burn, the brain function, your physical performance. It helps with wounds and um, all of that, but it also helps with the fat burning. It also helps with healthy apoptosis, which is the destruction of diseased and cancer cells. 
by following the cheat day with the accelerodyne, the brain fog that's associated with that day after is going to go away. The metabolism is going to get right back up and the energy is going to increase as well. And that ATP is that true cellular energy. So when ATP in increases, energy and fat oxidation increase. And the accelerodyne is also going to help your metabolism and physical energy by supplying the thyroid with the necessary iodine. Anyone with Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism, it, it, it probably is due to at least one of the factors is a lack of iodine and you need the proper iodine. Most iodines only have a 10 to 20% absorption. This has 100% absorption. And it also is detoxing the cells of all the toxins um, from the damage from the mRNA, graphene oxide, spike proteins. Um, so I'm assuming you understand what I'm talking about, but the accelerodyne is the only iodine that does that. Next is the accelerated ancient salt. I carry it with me everywhere I go. I have this little dish of it and put a pinch of it on your tongue 10 minutes after your dose of accelerodyne. A lack of the proper sodium and potassium may, may lead to that water retention after that cheat day. And it will cause additional issues with your sodium potassium pump in the cells. That sodium potassium balance in the cells is what gets the nutrients into the cells and the toxins out. So it's really important to have that balance. And um, most salts, as I mentioned, are stripped of the minerals except for sodium. And they also contain toxic microplastics. In a study of salts, they had 36 out of 39 salts tested included microplastics. So essentially every other salt. Those salts will lead to dehydration, toxicity, and of course, bloat. And bloat in your face, you know, that feeling of that round face, that's from dehydration and the wrong kind of salts. The accelerated ancient salt has over 62 minerals that will help rehydrate the body, improve the energy, improve the bioelectrical function and decrease bloat. Um, when you put that on your tongue, you'll experience a boost of energy, a lower of bl blood sugar, actually can bring a diabetic out of a diabetic crisis when their um, blood sugar is too high. But it also decreases an ap appetite. So it's gonna stabilize that blood sugar and, and help with your, your appetite. A lot of times the day after having a cheat meal or a full cheat day, you feel nauseous, right? Because your blood sugar's all over the, over the map, your liver's not feeling great. And that just by putting that salt on your, um, on your um, tongue is going to actually stabilize the blood sugar and just kind of keep you in a more stable um, department there. Next is the accelerated keto. This is the magic bullet, you guys. Wait 15 minutes after taking the accelerodyne. I usually do my accelerodyne, do the salt, and then I go make my coffee or my tea, and then I come back and I take my accelerated keto. And you want to give yourself 15 minutes away from food or any other supplement after taking the accelerodyne so it gets into all the cells. But then you're going to take three to four pills with your morning coffee or tea, that accelerated keto turns your body into fat burning mode within 30 minutes, just like that. So here you are, you've completely kicked yourself out of ketosis after your cheat day. And within 30 minutes, you are right back. It taps into your own fat stores for energy right away, taps into to burning those cheat calories that you had the day um, before as well. And as you're running on ketones produced by the accelerated keto combined with that intermittent fasting and a low carb diet that next day, high lean protein diet as the body starts immediately using the cheat calories for energy, that ATP production is going to increase significantly. And that sluggish feeling from the cheat food is going to be squashed literally squash. You are going to feel amazing and not have that hangry feeling of um, from that blood sugar problem because of the cheat calories and the accelerated keto is going to kick you into ketosis. So your body is looking for ketones and fat to burn. 
then the additional ingredients in the accelerated keto is going to help start help breaking down the, the saturated fats into unsaturated and really start burning that dangerous visceral fat around the belly and the liver fat. And the more the person's liver is defatted and unclogged, it's easier for the liver to function, including breaking down those fats into usable energy. It's also going to start kicking into the thyroid hormones converting from T4, which represents tyrosine, a molecule or amino acid from wild animal protein, and four molecules of iodine to T3, which is the active form, tyrosine, and three molecules of iodine. So that's going that happens in the liver. And if the liver is all gunked up, um, it's not going to be able to make that conversion. So this is the accelerated keto is going to start helping that and the thyroid is going to work better, increasing the metabolism, the mitochondrial function and the energy. And then, um, of course, you've got the HMB, which is going to prevent muscle wasting. And Michael had asked about how to exercise in the morning when you're fasted and we'd want to keep that uh, that that expensive muscle intact. Right. We don't want to burn it away when we're fasting. Well, the HMB in the accelerated keto is going to prevent that muscle wasting so that when your body's more primed to actually take in the great amino acids from the lean animal protein when you do eat it. And you're going to also get the benefit of that organic mucal in the accelerated keto that is known to break down fats in the body and prevent or uh, provide another energy spark to burn those fats. It's, it's that um, in Ayurvedic medicine, it's known to have that hot or fire element. And I know that I need it because in Ayurvedic medicine, I am double water. That means my digestive fire is like out always, unless I stoke it with some supplements. And my husband, on the other hand, is double fire. Maybe that's why we got married, but he's never had digestive issues because of that. But that organic mucal is able to give me that digestive fire and balance out my um, imbalances. And then lastly, there's the organic tricotu that is another way to increase that digestive fire, um, which also helps with burning of the ketones and, and um, increasing that digestion. Next is the accelerated silver. Now, why would you need this on a cheat day? The cheat meal is going to lower your immune system. You go to that party and you're around all these people and you know, I'm not afraid of COVID. However, it's going to, you're exposed to everything, colds, flus, whatever everybody's carrying around. And then you're eating this cheap food that's going to lower your immune system. So you want to take that accelerated C, uh, silver four to seven times that next day. It's enhancing your immune system's ability to devitalize all the foreign pathogens, including um, the, the viruses and bacteria and the ones that contribute to the leaky gut. So by keeping the immune system strong, the body engages in anti-inflammatory processes leading to that optimal health. Super important to be staying on the accelerated silver. The next is the mega spore. Um, this has been a game changer. This is unlike any other probiotic. I used to carry multiple probiotics on my website. I still have a couple that I haven't sold, but I wiped them out off my website because they don't compare to the mega spore. I recommend taking one to two pills with each meal. This blend aims to recondition the gut instead of reseeding the gut with the, the probiotic strains that can't survive digestion or colonize the gut. So most probiotics, you're taking them. And number one, there's only a few strands that are going down into your gut instead of like billions that our gut needs, but they don't even survive digestion. So it's a waste of money. The megaspore helps control the bad bacteria that lead to bloat and dysbiosis and grow the good bacteria. It's been shown to help with E. coli, salmonella, salmonella H. pylori, and more. This is a no-brainer that I take 
every single day to just make sure my gut is rock solid because that has been an issue of mine forever. And especially if you are eating foods, even if you're eating a low carb, healthy meal, but it's out of your control and you don't know what the prep has been done, you know, has the food been sitting out too long? Is there E. coli in it? Or is it, is it full of GMOs and you just went out to a restaurant? You don't know. The mega spore is going to help secure your gut. And with that, the mega pre, that is, um, it, it reinforces the beneficial microbial changes created by the mega spore. And it comes in a yummy powder. I mix the mega pre with the mega mucosa and I put it in my water and I kind of drink it all day long. Um, it actually tastes really good. It's nice and sweet. It reinforces that good bacteria. And then the mega mucosa is something that is to help um, build up that healthy mucosal barrier that can be damaged by just one day of cheat day. And it is the mucosal system is a really important part of your immune system. The mucosal system in the intestines contains 150 times more surface area than your skin, which makes it essential for a strong immune system. So you really want to seal that mucosal lining. Next, the X49 patch. I was joking in my, um, my text to all of you this morning that I did not have great energy this morning. And I put on my patches, I did my Acceleridine, I did my, my keto pills, and I went in my garage and I busted out a good workout. And I, I really could not do it with these patch, without these patches and supplements. The X49, I put it on two inches below my belly button. It enhances my strength, endurance, fat burning results when you are recovering from a cheat day and incorporating your exercises in a low carb diet. So you just do all the right stuff. You put a stupid little sticker on your body and you're going to enhance your results and snap out of the, the hangry feelings, the sluggish feelings, you're gonna feel so much better. It's going to increase that energy and recovery, improve your cardiovascular function and focus, incre increase muscle tone and strength, increase that lean body mass and bone density and reduce your body fat. With that, I do my energy enhancers and they're right here. Um, I also, sometimes I'll put a second set on the bottom of my feet if I'm really feeling sluggish. And these will immediately increase fat oxidation and caloric burn to help recover from a cheat day. Just by putting them on, you're burning an average of, ex of uh, 300 extra calories a day. They will increase your ATP production in the mitochondria, increase that heart rate variability, improve the bioelectrical measurement or phase angle, which is the integrity and health of your cells, reduce inflammation and increase endurance. And it's going to increase beta oxidation, which is the fastest way to increase cellular energy. It's going to increase that fat burning and muscle growth. Super easy, works synergistically with the accelerated keto and the accelerodyne in your fat burning and tapping into that endless supply of fuel on your body. All of these factors work really quickly to help you recover from that cheat day. And after just 20 minutes, you are going to see a difference in the capacity of each cell. So it also helps with digestion and circulation. Your digestion is going to suffer a little bit that next day. This is going to help improve it as well and improve that nutrient absorption. Next is the quintessential point nine. And this is a, a balance of um, minerals found in seawater that is exactly the same composition as our own blood plasma, our body just, just bathe in it and love it. I recommend taking three packets throughout that day after the cheat day. It supports homeostasis, rehydration, and normal digestion while eliminating the excess water retention after that cheat day. So it's really important. You will see a difference. It gently detoxifies, supports your sleep and relaxation and digestion. 
Next, you want to break your fast because all of us are going to say, oh my God, I'm not going to eat tomorrow at all. Well, like I said, you probably are going to be more hungry than you think, but after you take the accelerated keto, it's going to stabilize you and help you intermittent fast. So when you do get hungry, you want to break your fast with an omega fatty, uh, three fatty acids from wild fish and animal protein and that lean protein. So you want to fast as long as you can. That's going to help stabilize your, your blood sugar and insulin. But when you do eat that wild animal protein will increase glucagon, which is your fat burning hormone, and it will keep insulin low. And as a result, your fat burning will increase even more than during a fasting window. So that's, it kind of kicks up your fat burning for a little bit, but just by having that lean wild animal protein, and then you to even to even um, emphasize that more, go for a walk or go vibrate on a vibration machine, go do some squats. Just that was going to increase your fat oxidation after you've had that bit of protein with nothing else, no vegetables, no nothing else. That's also going to trigger a hormone called CCK that suppresses appetite and tells you to stop eating after an appropriate amount of food. And the amino acids and omega-3 fatty acids also trigger a dopamine, dopamine release, which will curb the cravings from the sugar or more cheat foods. How many times have you woken up on the morning after a cheat day and said to yourself, I'm never doing that again. And then by that night, you're digging into those cheat foods again, right? Well, your body and your brain have the signal of you wanting a dopamine release. You're stressed out from life, from family, from work, and your body is craving some sort of dopamine release. And that sugar, if you remember in my, in my um, video and my blog about the sugar addiction, there's three pathways to the brain from the gut, emphasizing and, and making you want more sugar. Well, we can retool that by this CCK hormone and then this association with the brain getting a dopamine hit from amino acids and healthy fats. Imagine that you can retool your brain. So you've got to, you can't just tell an alcoholic to stop drinking. You've got to give them something to replace it with, right? So it's the same thing with some addiction towards cheat foods, you want to be able to replace that addiction with um, something like the, um, the CCK trigger from the fatty, the omega-3 fatty acids and the wild animal protein. Next, you can put lemon, lime, or apple cider vinegar in your water. Consuming these before or at the same time as sugar, so the day of the cheat day, will blunt the rise in blood glucose and even the day after. With a slower rise in blood glucose, the less fat storing occurs and the cravings for sugar will decrease. Also sleep, you need to get enough sleep. So just by not sleeping, and you can see how this is a vicious cycle. After the cheat meal, without the detox powder, you're going to probably wake up in the middle of the night. You can also use the silent night sleep patches to help you sleep. But if you're not getting enough sleep, waking up in the middle of the night, is it going to increase cortisol in the middle of the night and increase ghrelin? And it's also going to increase um, your blood sugar. So all of those things are going to, to make you more hungry and also more store more fat. It's going to increase insulin. So you really need to do everything you can to have that, that good quality sleep. The liver flush, doing that three to four times a year is going to increase the health of your liver to detox from when, you're, when you are going to do a cheat day, which is going to then help you with your sleep on the day, on the times when you are incorporating cheat meals and cheat days. And I mentioned again, walk for 10 minutes after each meal. This is gonna slow the rise of blood sugar. After you feel totally disgusting and full after your cheat meal, even if it's at night, 
try to go walk for 10 minutes or do something that's going to slow the blunt or blunt the rise in blood sugar and blood glu glucose as well. So that is what I wanted to talk about. We've got four minutes for questions. If there are any, you can put them in the chat. But I just, you know, this is one of those things where it affects everybody. Um, I am pretty darn consistent with my diet and my, I don't really drink alcohol, not because I'm against it. It just doesn't work for my body. And I just work so hard on my liver. I just don't really want to make it sluggish and I feel it, but my cheats are, you know, a birthday cake. You give me a birthday cake and I'll give you the cake part, but I'll eat the frosting off, to, off of the whole cake. Even if it's from Costco and it's full of all of the bad vegetable oils, I, I am weak when it comes to a Costco uh, cake or just a ton of fruit or coconut whipped cream. Even if it's a healthy form of a cheat, it's still a cheat meal and you have these cheat, um, these side effects. So please share this video with your friends and family and people that need to hear this. It applies to everybody. And please invite your friends and family to my group coaching. It's free. I'm trying to get the word out there on all these quick tips and tools that you can use. And all of my recordings are done live on Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific time. That's California time. And they're usually up on my YouTube channel by Thursday or Friday of that week. So it's always a lot more fun to see your faces on live Zoom on Mondays. So I welcome you to bring your friends and everybody um, to the live show and taping. But please share these videos and share my podcasts that are on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Those are live. You can always join in on the, the um, live chats as well. I always welcome questions and have fantastic guests. Selfishly, I do my podcasts so that I get to learn from these guests. I only get people that I think are going to add value to your lives. So thank you, everybody. Have a great Monday, and we will see you next week.